great movies. Join me as I host a new show called On Cinema at the Cinemas, where I and a guest, a variety of guests each week, discuss upcoming films, and we tell you which movies are fresh and which movies are not. Join me at the movies and we'll give you our honest opinions on On Cinema at the Cinema. Join us. Should I see Wednesday on AdultSwim.com coming this week. Should I see a movie this weekend? Ah! It's On Cinema at the Cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Lucky Seven means Casino Edition. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema. I'm your host, Tim Heidecker. What a special show we have for you today. It is season seven, lucky season seven, and this is the seven, episode number seven, 707. So it's gonna be a special casino-themed uh, episode of the show, which I thought would be a fun thing. Not, I'm not gonna talk about the movie casino or anything, just introduce some casino-style games and uh, have fun with the idea that how lucky we are to be doing this great show and how lucky you guys are to be with us every week. Let's kick it over. Why do you think they're still watching on, after you canceled Hold on. Decker versus Dracula? There's probably nobody watching this anymore. And I'd like to welcome my guest, Mr. Sour Grapes himself, from the uh, Victorville Film Archive, Greg Turkington is with us. Hey guys, and it's kind of ironic that it's the lucky episode because the audience is unlucky and that if they tuned in to see movies reviewed, they're probably not going to. They're going to see an irrelevant casino gambling and personal problem discussions. Incorrect. I've got the movies right here. We're going to get to them and then get to these very simple games. It's, we're going to do a stump the buff and another surprise at the end. You're going to enjoy it. Here's uh, a, you know, one game that I just wanted to, as long as it's game time, how about everybody get on Twitter and tweet at Tim Heidecker, bring back Decker versus Dracula because we all loved it and he is the one who has somehow managed to halt production it's temporary. We will be back with the other episodes, but for now, it's no, been halted. Here's a fun game. Canceled. Who who can send the most tweets at Tim Heidecker no, saying, don't bother, bring back Drecker versus Dracula? Court that's of public a, opinion, by the way. It doesn't matter. What matters is quality, and uh, that's why we don't, we'll never see another episode of Decker versus Dracula. Thank you, Greg. Today, we're going to be talking about Jen and the, Jim and the Holograms, directed by John M. Chu, starring Julius, Juliet Lewis, Stephanie Scott, Ryan Guzman, Molly Ringwald from the old Molly Ringwald movies. As a small town girl catapults from underground video sensation to global superstar, she and her three sisters begin a journey of discovering that some talents are too special to keep hidden. This is a classic, um, in my opinion, one of the great classics of all time, Gem and the Holograms. It's uh, based on a cartoon from, the kid, from when I was a kid, and I loved this movie. It was a great throwback to the old times uh, remem remembering some of those great gem songs. They were kind of uh, like the Bangles or the groups like that. I give it five bags of popcorn. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a Star is Born mm -hmm. type of scenario, but with animated characters who have now come to life. So it, it, it's interesting. I'll give it that. I'll give it five bags of popcorn as well. Great. And uh, pop. second one is Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. They can keep making these for as, for as well as I care. I'd watch every single one of them. And then you'd pull the plug on them after three of them so that people never found out how they ended. Directed by Gregory, Gregory Plotkin. Acted by Olivia Taylor Dudley. Chloe Sezengary. Sezengary? Sezengary? And Britt Shaw. Another installment in the Paramount Horror franchise guaranteed to shock all viewers. And that is true. It is a, one of the, talking about jumping out of your seat, I felt like I was going to, the word I like to use for is spine tingling. And it was really wonderful. I, I love a good horror movie. Uh, you know, not something that really uh, gives you a spook. Not like, like the Dr. Sand Forgiveness special. That was a horror movie. Well, it's, take anything over some old, uh, you know, like when they take these old Dracula uh, movies and try to reboot this old tired guy in a tuxedo. And I'm, we're not going to get into that. No, uh, you won't let us. You won't let us see the remaining episodes. Honestly, when he got that beard, I didn't think he was right to play Jack Decker anymore. Uh, but he did anyway, and it was a disaster. But it's certainly not my fault it was a disaster. He, you're the lead actor, and you uh, refused to show up for more than a few hours, gave a piss-poor performance and then pull the plug and have a tantrum 
uh, like a, like a crybaby, like little Tom Cruise Heidecker would, because people liked it better than they liked Decker uh, uh, Hawaii. Just like somebody uh, has to pay to get cast in the Fantastic Four because somebody else got cast in Ant Man. It's 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 just professional jealousy, and it's just destroying this uh, franchise here. But I think that if you would let the other 17 episodes plus the two-hour finale actually get completed and air, uh, you might find that you get some awards. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Dr. San, who has been on, has me on this powder called Relax, which I take twice a day. And what it does is it takes all that crap energy that comes this way, all that negativity, all that vitriol. What's more it, negative than pulling the plug on a show that all these people depend on for their livelihood and to be entertained by? That seems pretty negative. Well, I've never been more calm and more at peace than I am right now as you uh, flap off at the mouth. And I suppose uh, I'll just, it's sort of just rolling off me, which is, that powder is unbelievable. If you're ever in stressful situations, take a spoonful, put it in water or juice. And so the moral of the story is instead of watching uh, Decker versus Dracula and finding out an interesting story with an interesting ending and some twists and turns, instead of that, just take a, some weird drugs from some quack doctor who's been discredited. Are you done? Because uh, I'd like to move on to the fun games. Your show got canceled, it's time to move on. Take the, lick your wounds, get up off your ass, and make something in your life. Uh, choices have been made and I'm living with them. James from Dean the... fans are furious mm -hmm. too. And sure if, you go, if you hang out in James Dean message boards or chat rooms, James Dean fans, we're looking forward to seeing the first James Dean performance since 1955. I mean, this is a piece of history that uh, essentially you aboard. Am I gonna send you back to Victorville and block you up in your uh, viewing station or are you gonna play along and be a good sport and be my guest on the show? Or do you wanna leave? I'll finish the show. Okay, that's what I thought. Let's get into these casino games and we can go home. Are you ready to play Stump the Buff? Sure. Okay, Stump the Buff. Because it's lucky number seven here, uh, these are all questions that have to do with the number seven. Number one, what 1995 thriller starred Brad Pitt and Mitchell Morgan? Black. No. Mitchell Black. No, it's seven. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Seven. Well, that's a trick because the game is called seven. Why would the answer be the same thing as the game? Obviously, no one's going to guess seven because it's too ridiculous that you would use okay. that. Well, I was clear that it's the answers were about seven. And that Brad was the Pitt name. was in Meet Joe Black and came out in 1990. What 1954 film directed by Stanley Donnan and starring Jane Powell and Howard Keel won the Academy Award for Best Score? Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. Yeah. Well, Howard Keel, Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. You're very close. It's Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. That's the British title in America. It's called Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. Okay, it's O for Two. No, because the British oh. title, we, we're in America. We're going by the American titles. America, I think it was called Seven Brides for Seven Grooms. Okay, well, we'll look that up and see if there's any accuracy to that. Find out. Well, this is the uh, wild card question. As they do in Vegas, they've got the wild card. And I thought that was kind of neat. Um, this is an interesting question that actually concerns here uh, us here at On Cinema. What is the lowest rated film in On Cinema history? So the question is, what film got the lowest rating in the history of On Cinema? It was that um, One Direction documentary that you and Ayako went to. No, I'm sorry, that, that got five it. bags of popcorn? No, I, I, I hated, hated it. It wasn't even a No, movie. no, no. We have a scale. If we add them both up, if we give five bags each, you'd have 10 bags of popcorn. One Which, direction nope. got zero. I mean, I wouldn't have given that anything. It well, wasn't, I give it wasn't five even a bags movie. of popcorn. So the answer is with one bag of uh, popcorn from this year, this season actually, the first episode was Ant Man. That was All right. Over. All right. Um, I was going to play another game. I got these on the way in. In the money, it's called. Let's see, I was gonna give one to Greg to play. I'll just see what happens here. Hey. <laughs> that 
thousand bucks. All right, see you next week.